Testing one, two, okay. Hello everybody, welcome to the Noah Massard Show. Today um, I am joined by politician, local politician, Harrison Jones. Harrison, uh, uh, introduce yourself a little bit for the people who don't know sure. what you do. Sure. Exactly. Well, Noah, thank you so much uh, for having me I'm on. Gla- I'm s- I am ecstatic to have you here today. Thank you. Yes. yes. So my name is Harrison Jones. I'm born and raised here in Farmville, Virginia. And last November, I was elected to the Prince Edward County Board of Supervisors, where I became, to the best of my knowledge, the youngest county supervisor in the history of the Commonwealth. That's a pretty big deal. That's a. It's it's an honor. Who's it's the second honor. youngest? The youngest I've heard of, other than myself, is in their late twenties. And you are how old? I am twenty years old. Guys, we have a twenty-year-old making decisions. I became. I started my campaign yeah. as a teenager. That's crazy. You have to be the first teenage politician. Is that even legal? It, you know, it's it's legal. It's kind of like a gray it's, area. It's in the yeah, rules. In the law. If you can, as to my knowledge, if you can vote, you can run. Really? Um, the, there are exceptions for president. You know, written into the Constitution, uh, you have to be 35. So they're not going to let me run for president oh. until 2040. Well, but. Uh, and and you see a lot of younger politicians in very small localities with the town council. Yeah. Um, you, you'll you'll get an 18 year old on a city council every once in a while, um, but county supervisor is kind of the next level. Okay. Ab- above really above that. Yeah. So it's the highest level of local government, and so I'm it, really kind of honored stuff? to get to be a part of that. I I would be too if I was a part of that, but I'm not, and I don't plan to be. You know, politics are for the people that can lie, but also give great judgment to what needs to happen. Some politicians are not forthright. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I would have to talk to each one to say most, and I'm not going to vouch for everybody. I can only be responsible for myself. And that's a very respectable position to be in, Harrison. I I appreciate your honesty. Um, Wow. So how long have you been a part of the Board of Supervisors? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I was elected last November. Last November. And so I took office with the new year. And so I've got to experience the inner workings of local government over the past six months. And it has been a tremendous learning experience. I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Can you share for the the people who are not in such power, what is it like to be that guy? Just being like, hey, I'm here. I'm a board of supervisors. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy. It's not always as flashy as you might think you don't wear like the rolex watches and do you wear a lot of no, suits no I, you're wearing a buttoned up shirt right now you know, i I'll, I'll dress presentably for yeah. the for the meetings uh, i feel like as a as the youngest member um by a generation uh at, at least that i need to make up for what i lack in age by mm-hmm. bringing my a game in every other area of my life That's and so if i can control my appearance and be professional, then I'm going to do it. You're already a step ahead of the other young politicians out there. Wow. I'm sweating a lot tonight. I don't know. It's this <laughs> hot, it's steamy. I, it's like, what is the humidity, Travis, right now? Can you look that up? While well, he's pulling 80, wow. But it's like, it feels like I'm in hell. It's a, uh, right now. it's a little sticky. We're it's a little sticky. Wonderful man. Virginia Independence Day weather. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. You gotta love the Independence Day weather. Wow. Seventy three. So, as a board of supervisor, what can you do about the the humidity in Virginia? Can you control with your like satellites of anti weather ray guns? Can you like manipulate? God alone is in control of the weather. Man cannot control the weather. Interesting. Okay. Um, so I, that kind of brings up the next thing I want to talk about. So as a politician of sorts, right, um, are you religious? Like in Absolutely. My identity, and I, I'm not about religion. Of course. I'm not about rules, but I'm about a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's my number one identity. 
if, if you want to know who I am, I'm a Christian first, mm -hmm. I'm a conservative second, and I'm a Republican third. Wow, that's like, that's I just see red, right, and, red, white, and blue on you right now, just like shimmering off. I see just like bald eagles flying out of your face right now, Harrison. <laughs> well, well, thank you. That's, I, I that's take the that most American uh, statement I think we have ever, have ever had on the show, I want to say. That's, that's pretty amazing. Um, so... I, yeah. I approach everything with a biblical worldview. Interesting. Even politics. Absolutely. So because, because everything it's about is making decisions. And you have to approach decision making with absolute truth. And the only place to find absolute truth is in the word of God. And so I can take that biblical worldview where we get our sense of right and wrong, who we are as humans created in the image of God. And really the purpose of government is to protect your protect our citizens and enable them to pursue life liberty and happiness yeah so what about like people who are like i'm not religious i don't care they just don't care right and not that they won't become religious later on but they're like you know hey i'm living my life and i don't believe there's a god so why do i have uh, politicians with these beliefs do you feel like let me ask you this before i go on like a, a small tangent not okay. nothing big sure but so you you basically said i think um that your relationship with god is personal but like those like having that relationship uh helps with the decisions that you make every day and in politics so you're saying being religious does that influence your political career Having a relationship with Jesus yeah. is my identity. So, so everything I do, I want to do for the glory of God. And so when you approach even the most mundane decisions, often it comes down to right and wrong. And where are you going to turn for right and wrong? Because our culture certainly doesn't have the answer. The mm -hmm. only place you can go is the Word of God. Gotcha. So you you base. Uh, so what do you do as a board of supervisor? First yeah. of all, I should so the, mention so that. W our level of local government is the the legislative body okay. and so our job really is to pass ordinances and we deal with tax we, we we raise taxes personal property taxes real estate taxes and using that funding we build roads schools and fund the sheriff's department among many other things uh, including the library and different services the neat part about local government is that you can actually see where every dollar gets spent mm. and so that's that's something that's a lot it's different than what you see in washington where it's just where like it's, money just disappears yeah it disappears until, like, it, it goes it pocket. goes it goes into somebody's pocket uh, yeah well who, yeah. whose pocket uh, as like an insider you have like a small piece. i have no you have like in, a inside small, scoop you know um but i, I have maybe. my personal opinions over you know different things that don't quite add up you know corruption that we definitely see in washington Interesting. And I don't, you know, I don't know what the rest of my life's going to look like. I never set out to be a career politician. I don't want, I don't want to get rich yeah. off of doing this. I felt called to serve. And yeah. so that's why I got involved. Yeah. And so if someone's called to a lifetime of public service, then that's great. If that's what the Lord wants from them, then they should do it with all their heart. Uh, but if you're doing it to, to get rich and put money in your pocket, I think you've, you, you're not representing the people in their best authority. And so that kind of builds onto what I think you were hinting at earlier mm -hmm. where I have my beliefs, but I can represent someone very well who doesn't have the same beliefs mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, my beliefs coincide with basic human morality. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting guys. Uh, all right. Um, I, I, so before uh, we started this, I had some notes. I, I ripped the page out and threw it out like somewhere on 460 uh, if somebody wants to go find that. But I, I, one of my questions was, uh, what do you think happened in the 2020 election? Um, and just speaking from what you believe happened, not, you know, like anything... Just like from your personal opinion and what you witnessed, what do you think happened? Do you think the election was stolen? That's what I'm trying to get at. I think a lot of people have legitimate questions about election integrity. And so I can't point to any one county and say there was fraud because it mm -hmm. wasn't there. Yeah. And, but I'm, I'm shocked that we saw such 
you know, someone who ran a campaign from their basement Mm -hmm. supposedly pull off the most votes in history. Yeah. That's, you have to have a lot of faith to buy that, and I don't know if I have that much faith. But, like, after somebody who was so hated, like Trump, Trump was very hated, I do you think it wouldn't have inspired people to be like, you know what, I'm voting against this guy. I don't care who's running. It could be my nana who lives in Italy. You know, I'm, I'm voting for this person. Some people definitely voted out of their disdain for Donald Trump's personality. That was me. Sure. And that was, I'm yeah. just one and, and I defend, of many people. And I, and I respect your right I to have that opinion. That. Um, a lot of people liked Trump's policies. Some people liked his personality. Most people did not like his personality. Yeah. I think he had some great policy decisions that made him a better president than the current administration. And so he didn't do, he didn't do everything right. No. Absolutely no. not. And I'm and I'm not necessarily his apologist. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, but he did a lot of things very well. And I would say the best thing he did for America yeah. was move the United States Embassy from Tel Aviv to, to, Jer- to Jerusalem, Jerusalem in yes. in the nation of Israel. Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, guys. Isn't that where he was born? Uh, somewhere in Israel? G- yes. Uh, yeah. Somewhere. Yep. yep. Jesus was born. T- tell us about the Jesus story, Harrison. I would love to hear it from you, um, if that's okay. Yeah. You you want the I love, the gospel? Give it to me, man. Okay. Give it from start to 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 the very birth okay. of the baby Jesus. How many minutes do you want me to spend on J- it? Less than two. Okay. In the beginning was sorry, the word. One one minute. One okay. minute. I'm sorry. In the beginning was the word. God yes. existed fully. In three persons, the Father, the Son, mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit. He created everything. He created you. You have a purpose. You are loved. He sent his Son down to earth because, you know what? We messed up. We're sinners. It's built into our nature. We are fallen creatures in need of a Savior. And so he loved us so much that he sent his one and only Son to come and live. He lived a perfect life. He chose to go to the cross. He died for our sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He conquered sin. He conquered death forever. He ascended into heaven. He promised he's coming back. And in the meantime, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're called to do as Christians. That's what I believe. That's where I get my purpose. My identity is in Jesus Christ alone. And I believe he's coming back. He's coming back soon. And I want to live every day fulfilling the calling he has on my life and to spread the gospel, the good news, that you are loved, God is real, and he wants a personal, real relationship with you. Okay, so a couple of things there. That was great. That was, I mean, that that totally wasn't planned at all. That was pretty, that was like when you pop in a cassette and it's like an autoplay message. Like, that just came. (laughs) That's straight from the heart. Yeah. Okay, so what about people that are like, hey, I'm not religious. This Jesus stuff is like, it's not even real. People who believe that. And they they live in Virginia. They're like, I don't want a politician who has be- like religious beliefs it, having influence on like what decisions get made because they're afraid of I don't know what your decision may be. Or I, I know you're not just like one. You know, you're not making all the rules. Obviously, right. I'm one like, vote out of eight. But of course, uh, somebody like what if somebody's just like I'm not religious and I don't want somebody who is making uh, decisions based off of their belief in Christ that I don't believe, you know? Sure, but everybody has a conscience. Yeah. And everybody, deep down, knows right and wrong. So you're saying everybody has the decision. Everyone is created in the image of God and has free will. Yeah. So it's it's not just assumed we know it deep Mm -hmm. down that Mm -hmm. it's wrong to murder. And so it's, it's wrong to steal. And so... Really, we're, we're, we're created in the image of God, and he has given us commandments to live by. Yeah. And those commandments have been spread by the church. You know, the church isn't perfect, but it's full, it's full of sinners saved by grace. And the United States of America was founded with a Christian worldview. We're, we're a Christian nation, and that doesn't mean... Everyone 
within the nation must be Christian, but we're, we're founded on principles that, you know what, we are sinners. We mess up. We're not perfect. And so we need to have protections in place to protect other people from the sin of their neighbor or from the sin of an enemy. And so that's the ultimate purpose of government to protect that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is really a a question of property ownership. And so you have a right to these things, and it's based off of biblical truths. You read the Old Testament, you read the New Testament. That's where the founders get these concepts. We have certain inalienable rights endowed by our Creator. If we don't believe in God, then we have no right to believe in rights. I I would have to disagree with that last part. I think just because you don't have a belief in God doesn't mean that you, you know, don't already have a like set belief of morals that you live by. And yes. I know you're going to say, "Well, God put them there." Is that what you were going to say? I might have been like assuming, but like I feel I feel like I've heard that uh like a little thing by a lot of Christians. They're like, you know, Sure. God put those wh- you don't believe in murder? Why is that? Because God put them there from the start. I don't know. I feel like I hear that a lot. Yeah. And Be- I think because we know that there's value in human life. Yeah, exactly. All human life has value. And so and I believe that you do, that yeah. comes from God. And so but I can work with other people who also believe that human life is valuable even if they don't necessarily believe, believe that God. it comes from God. Yeah. But do you think you personally believe that your decisions might be a little like uh, leaning towards the God side because that's what you truly believe. Uh, so any like decisions related to that, don't you think you're like leaning towards more to your like religious side of thinking uh, rather than your like, hey, you know, I'm I'm making decisions for everybody here, people who don't, you know, believe this Jesus stuff. Yes. Yeah. Everyone has a set of beliefs. Mm hmm. They either worship the God of heaven or they worship the God of atheism or something else. There's everyone approaches life with a worldview. They see things, they believe things. I think it's best we have to have people with morals that are not subjective because there are, there's a lot of good people out there. You know, society calls them good, but what's the standard? I call them good. The standard is God's law. And no one can fully live up to it. That's why we need the grace of Jesus Christ in our lives. Interesting. Okay. Um, Harrison Jones, what do you what do you think about abortion? Is that okay to say? Can we talk about this? Yes, I'd love to talk about it. This before I love to talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about abortion. Give me your uh, two minute presentation on. Uh, let's just imagine we have like a slideshow and it's like, what about abortion? Question mark, question mark. Sure. Like, I believe that every life is created in the image of God. Mm-hmm. And so human life has intrinsic value. I believe you're human whether you have left your mother's body or whether you're still inside your mother's mm-hmm. body. I believe that ultimately life starts at conception. And so any type of abortion is taking a human life. It's not just a lump of cells within a mother's body. They have unique DNA. At the time the egg is fertilized, they have a, the complete set of DNA that they will have for the rest of their lives. And so you can't draw in a completely subjective, arbitrary line where, well, at 16 weeks we can detect a heartbeat or whatever the, the arbitrary line is because, you know, say we develop in our scientific capabilities and in down the road you can detect a heartbeat at 15 weeks well does that mean that those folks that were so i i I don't want to sidetrack too much but i believe that life starts at conception and that abortion is fundamentally wrong i don't judge the people who have had an abortion at all no, we need to be there. The church needs to be there to support those people who've gone through gone through that. But I think from a philosophical standpoint, it is wrong. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that might be a problem with people who are like, I don't believe in God. What's this guy talking about? 
God created everybody. That's uh, that's shenanigans. Uh, and he's making. I'm just. I'm speaking for like this. Yeah, Joe and Schmo. I appreciate you playing the devil's and he's advocate. Like, he, well, I am the devil's advocate, in Harrison. You might not know. That's my side job. That's, okay. how I'm, that's my little okay. side hustle. But like, really, he's, some Joe Schmo down the street. Sure. Like, I. This is nonsense. What is this guy? And he he's like, it is a lump of cells. Why is this guy? Basing decisions off of his uh, religious belief. Well, I'm also a lump of cells. Yeah. And if I'm in a coma and I'm un- I'm an unresponsive lump of cells. So if someone comes but you in were alive and, at one point and and takes my yeah okay, but what if I'm guaranteed to come out of the coma after 24 hours? And you take my life. If if someone took my life while I was in the coma, I was an unresponsive life of cells. But it, I was guaranteed to become responsive in the future. Mm-hmm. I didn't cease to become a human being mm-hmm. when I was in the coma. No, but you're in a coma, and you have a mortgage, maybe in this scenario. And you've you know so lived, human. You've worked. So are you saying I'm that not, human life only has based, value yeah. if you have a bank account? No, but I'm saying. You've like you are your parents decided to have you. I think that's where the decision comes down to. Not if you've already like, of course, I'm not going to pull the plug if you've already lived a life and you're like still living it and you fell into a coma that at that point you're already alive, you know, but um, and, and I'm guaranteed to experience more life in the future. Sure. Sure. Just like that. Yeah, baby but, but the thing in, is, in the in the womb is yeah. guaranteed to experience life in the future they have a unique set of dna they have a soul they're they're a human yeah but like the baby is not like okay before a heartbeat the baby is like i know you're all disagree but like a blob of cells i'll just I'll just use that term you like to use that term i like to use that term it's funny okay blob sure. of cells yeah. like travis your blob of cells it's a, blob. It's a big blob Right. Yeah. So, um, so, so, but, what? But, 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 it takes a lot of money, right? So, so, I think, I think the abortion thing should come down to the parents, and this is why. So, it takes money, and of course, you're gonna say adoption, but like to have a baby, to deliver a baby, it's gonna cost you what? Like, let's just say ten thousand dollars. What if you don't have that money? What if? Uh, you don't want to bring a life into this world yet, but like if something happened by accident, like it's not like the baby is like a five year old, and then we're like, you know, we're tired of little Timmy. Why What's... would the five year old have more worth than the baby that's eight months because, in the womb? Because the parents decided to keep him, and he's five. So nobody's gonna be like, I'm tired of this five year old. Let's abort him. I hear what you're but saying. Like, I hear what you're saying, still, but that. That yeah. by that same train of logic, then if a child were unplanned and they came and they were a toddler and the child and the, and the parents decided that they didn't want the child anymore, that that wouldn't be acceptable for the parents to take the child's life at that point. Because those are that's irresponsible parents. If they're like, ah, we're tired. You know what? I don't even know what we were thinking five years ago let's get rid of this fucking guy this little five-year-old like at that point you've made a decision but i think uh uh, you made the the decision at the same point whether the child is eight months old in the womb or Mm -hmm. five years old out of the womb i think at at the point if you decided to bring a child into to the world it's you know you're set in stone and you're kind of like okay we're gonna do this yeah you're making that decision in the bedroom not in the operating room not in the operating room. No, you made you made that decision in the bedroom. Y- oh, so you're saying just by c- having a like being pregnant, you already made the decision. Absolutely, you, there's no backing. The, well, the life is already there. Well, what if what if somebody and, was- and there are tragic situations, yeah. and the church needs to step up, and that's why we have the pregnancy uh, support, support center. center here yeah. in Farmville, and they're doing a great ministry by supporting those pregnancies that you know maybe maybe they weren't planned, maybe they're mm-hmm. it, they're come mothers are coming from a tough situation and maybe more more folks who feel called christian or not need to step up and be more supportive with the adoption process my family just adopted a a little boy last uh last year and he's been a tremendous blessing on our life and it's really really special his name is davis Uh, davis yes little davis i hope i hope you uh, can look back on this interview 10 years from now and be like, well, you know what? I'm glad I wasn't aborted. Uh, 
that's my brother. That's yeah. my brother. And then, and that's yeah. that's all of us. Yeah. You know, you know, for thousands of years, your heritage, your pedigree, chose life. And thank God they did because now we get to enjoy Noah Massaro. Now we can have this show, guys. Yes. Because I wasn't aborted. Hey. Um, well, I don't know about. That. Um, I'm just saying, you know, at the end of the day, and this is where I come from. If like a ba- if somebody, uh, if a woman is pregnant, like eight, eight, seven, six months pregnant, let's say, hypothetically, is, what's inside of her? A blob of cells. When does it stop becoming a blob of cells and start becoming a human? Um, when it stops, uh, when it starts becoming a human. Well, the thing is, I'm not saying you should get an abortion at like when you're about to have this baby like when it's coming out why is that different late-term abortion is uh, a little bit different uh because you have a heartbeat at that point and uh i don't know i just like i don't know but like honestly honestly harrison i'm speaking i see that i see that little eyebrow but i'm speaking even if it's a like even if it's a baby i think as long as it's inside of a woman she has the right to be like you know what let's get rid of it like that's where I come from. Even if if we can prove that the baby has a conscious conscience, I believe if it's still inside the woman, she has the right to be like, okay, let's let's clean, you know, flush the toilet here, like clean up on aisle seven. I don't know because like, so yeah, she's I, taking up space. I or agree. He's taking up space. The baby, the the fetus. Oh, whatever. the baby. It's I use baby and fetus. I called my uh, like uh, one year niece a fetus at one point because I I use those terms inter- interchangeably. Harrison, I really yeah I do too when they're baby. when they're in the womb when they're in the womb yeah, yeah it's it's a baby yeah. it, it or ceases fetus. to become a fetus at the point of birth. Um, I think um, I'm not a, a biology major. Um, if I suffer from cardiac arrest mm-hmm. and my heart stops beating, oh I don't God. have a heartbeat. Am I just a blob of cells? But in the time it takes the paramedics to arrive and apply a defibrillator to me, I I know Harrison because your parents decided to have you. But I'm I'm just saying it should be left up to the parents in the people who are. Uh, helping with the abortion i think they ultimately it should be left up to those two parties because why are we having government interfere with that situation being like you're killing people we gotta we gotta put the handcuffs on you you know the like, government's purpose yeah is to protect life liberty and the pursuit of happiness that mother does have rights yes she enjoys the same rights that everyone else does but so does the baby because the baby is human life that baby deserves to not be murdered and so the government's job is to protect you from being murdered it's the government's job to protect me from being murdered that's why we have sheriffs and police and a a wonderful military overseas protecting us because our life is valuable because we are created in the image of god so i think as much as the parents have rights the unborn also have rights because they're still people. Yes, they are dependent on their mothers. They require nutrition from the umbilical cord. But guess what? When that baby first is birthed and brought into the world and sees sunshine for the very first time, they're still dependent on their mothers. But no one would say, well, I I hope that no one would say that it's all right to take the life of an eight-day-old newborn baby, even though they're still dependent on their mother for nutrition. If, if well, you, at that point, it's not only dependent on them. It's anybody who wants to take care of an eight-day-old right. baby. Like in, in, a, a homeless in, person, if he had the resources, he could raise this child sure, technically. But in theory, yeah. you know, let, let's say there's a, a, on a desert island, there's sure. a mother with an eight-day-old baby. Yeah. If you take the life of the eight-day-old baby, it's murder. Just like if it's murder to take the life of the mother. They both have intrinsic, an intrinsic God-given right to live. Mm-hmm. And that's just my opinion. Well, technically, I, I might be wrong on this, but technically, wouldn't a miscarriage... I I think you're going to say, this is what I believe that's going to happen next, is you're going to be like, well, the mother didn't plan on it, and the baby died tragically, so it was more of an accident than a murder. But technically, since she, the baby or the fetus is inside the mother, mother has a miscarriage... 
did you not did she not just mur- accidentally murder like uh when what would that be called in like legal terms if somebody accidentally killed somebody else but not not intending and now what now that, now we're really splitting hairs we are now splitting hairs on this splitting, show guys splitting hairs but what but i but i think really the principle that but, we're but can you answer the question though the mis the miscarriage yes. is not something the mother intended Exactly. So, yeah. But she is. Uh, oh my God. What's she, a, she didn't control it. You don't. I, I you don't. Te- watching Law and Order. I forgot. You my, didn't tell your yeah. heart to beat the last two hundred times over the past three minutes. It, I, it, this has been it, strenuous it, it, on my. Yeah, but hearts. There, there's things that are out of our control. Yeah. And I think it's our job to not enable people to take other people's lives. Do you think we should start holding the mus- mothers in some sort of re- uh, responsibility for the miscarriage? Be like, well, you know... No, you can't... You cannot... You can't... En- en- enforce... You can't? No. But if no. she gets but an that, abortion, that's, you that's can? A whole, that's a whole other question. But if I, she decides I, I to kill the abortions baby. are fundamentally wrong because you are making a choice to take human life. Let's talk about gay rights. Harrison Jones. I don't believe you're gay. Is that am I fair in saying that? That is an accurate statement. That's an accurate statement, guys. Okay, do you believe uh, gay people living in Virginia should have rights to marry each other? I believe they already have uh, laws passed on the books. Yes. I believe that homosexuality is a sin. Mm-hmm. And if you had the chance, would you reverse that law? Is what I'm saying. I like, would. You would. So you would. Take back the laws that are in place to to replace the gay rights. Marriage whatever. is between a man and a woman. Marriage is really a concept spread through the church. And so for the government to step in and then expressly break that, you're, you're getting into separation of church and state here, where the church says marriage is between a man and a woman. A healthy church does. That's what the Word of God says. But there are churches that say, you know what, guys? If you want to have sex with a dude, or uh, if a lady wants to have sex with a lady, what what is that called when they just like the like smush the like? That, so that's, so that's, I, I would that's, refer to that as a, a false teacher. False teacher. Okay. So interesting. So, but even though they're technically a church, the the Word of God says that homosexuality is a sin. That's what I believe. Can you quote that Bible? I know, I know it says it somewhere, but can you just quote yeah, for the people? Leviticus, I believe, chapter 13 really goes into the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah and it tells, tells the historical account of um, uh, homosexuality and the judgment released on those uh, cities. Also, Romans 1 goes into detail. Paul talks about it throughout the New Testament. Interesting. Okay. Yes. But and would, I, I can pull up the scripture in Romans 1 yeah. later on if you'd like me to. But you don't think, uh, I don't know, um, so you you believe, since it's like in the word, that we can only go by that. And I think that would be kind of going back to what I said earlier about like, what about people who don't believe in God, don't believe in church, and kind of kind of like it's a sh- you know a lot of shenanigans going on over there um and you, i support their right to have that belief yeah but you don't support their right to live in that belief of if they want to be gay they can't be gay because you would reverse that technically i'm not in support of the government supporting it because then our tax dollars are going to support it and so christians have a right to not have their tax dollars go to something they fundamentally disagree with. Sorry to interrupt. We need a boat. I'm making a uh, stew with beans and lentils and potatoes. And I'm wondering if I should add tomato paste to the base. For the viewers, I am making a stew with lentils and beans and potatoes. And I'm wondering if I should add tomato paste to the base of the stew uh i like tomato paste i think we should do that but i'm not the deciding vote here i always default to italian cuisine cuisine experts cuisine i i was i was gonna say cuisine art like the mixer brand, yeah, yeah. That's that's what popped into my mind. But cuisine, cuisine. I trust your taste buds. Well, yeah, tomato ba- paste, tomato base, 
and tomato paste, two delicious things yeah. I could eat raw. Um, but I, I, just, I don't know. I just think, I just think um, people who don't believe in having people who are in power or polit- any sort of like political power, I, if I was gay. I would, and I didn't believe in God. Hypothetically, here, sure, I'd be like, "Why is this guy making decisions based on his religion?" I mean, what's up? So with you have they have a right to vote, yeah. And so, if they disagree with my views, they can vote for a candidate that supports that lifestyle. But really, that's not any question that we're dealing with here at the county level. Mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. a hypothetical. Uh, but I just want I want people issue. to see where you're coming from. Sure, yeah. All citizens have a right to vote. I think he wants, I, from what I heard earlier, he don't want anybody doing anything in the wrong holes. I don't Is want. I don't want my tax dollars going to support blatant sin. But what about somebody who does want their tax dollars to go be like, "Hey, I want my money to go support gay marriage." Shouldn't then, shouldn't people have a right to do, like check off what they want their tax money to go so to? So that's called a private donation. Yeah. To a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which you can write off on your taxes. Great. Now I, So if Noah Massage yeah. needs to write a check supporting yeah. gay marriage, he will write that directly to the organization of his choosing and not to the federal government. Wow, guys, that's pretty that's pretty great stuff right there, man. Wow. Um, Harrison, what do you think about the use of drugs? I personally do not use drugs. Oh, I and God bless you for it. You're a politician. You shouldn't be. No. Um, no. But do you think uh would you would you I don't know take away uh, the acts or whatever the laws of uh, recreational use of drugs? That's that's tricky uh, subject matter that I'm I I need to do more research on. Uh, some drugs are illegal and should be illegal. Some drugs uh, I imagine are legal that should be illegal. I think that sobriety is important and I will choose to remain sober and I think that we should protect our citizens from other people who are under the influence who may step over the line and attack their life liberty anyone who's high on marijuana is in their couch and I, I don't mean on top of their couch but i mean they're like inside of the couch like they've become the couch and so that that's a tricky uh, yeah that that's they're a, not that's nobody that's high. something that at the moment yeah. i don't have enough research on to comment effectively okay when you are high the chair you are not sitting in the chair you become the chair you actually are a chair at that point, and you're like, "Oh my God, I can become a chair." Interesting. No yeah. massage speaking from experience. I, I well, you know, what? I am not saying I haven't dabbled in the the drugs occasionally. I mean, I I, I, I do agree with you. Sobriety is incredibly important, but I also think if uh, it's important to step out of your own state of mind every once in a while and to be like, "Oh wait, you know, why sure. am I taking myself too seriously?" You know, like. Life is just, you know, it goes on and on after I die. Like, I shouldn't be so serious all the time. And I feel like marijuana has helped me in that sense. And, like, other people as well. But, like, I don't know. I just feel like uh, if you want to get high, even if you don't have any, like, realizations, if you're just like, you know what, I'm tired, I want to get high, you should get high. So if we're on the philosophical, you know, what does Harrison Jones believe deep down personally and – you know that we're not. Dealing, That's what we want. We're not dealing with Harrison, that type Harrison. of legislation. Exactly. On the I want to. Pe- the people want to know. The people want to know, Harrison. What do you believe? Not, you know, anything other than that. They want to know what type of person you are. Yeah. And I think this the show is helping that. I believe that becoming drunk, becoming under the influence of any substance, is sin. That's what the Bible says. That's why I believe it. I don't think that all alcohol 
is sin. I think it's fine to enjoy a glass of wine. Jesus's first public miracle was turning water into yeah, wine. Thank God for that. So alcohol that would have been so boring without the wine. Alcohol yeah. was yeah, uh, it was a staple in the Jewish community. Yeah. You know, they they drank it because the water was impure, and so it was a way of uh, water purification. So it wasn't quite as strong as yeah. what what uh, some beverages are on the market. But you can enjoy a glass of wine with your pasta dinner yeah. in Italy and not get drunk. Yeah, of course. And, but like, and that's a good thing. But what about prescription drugs that easily get you high, even if you're taking the appropriate amount that the doctor recommended? That's You're getting high, but the doctor told you, hey, you need to get high. And, and essentially, I'm, I'm not, not against prescription but, medication but you are, uh, that for will illness. Make you, that will change your state of mind. But you are against not all medication changes your state of mind. So I'd have to you'd yeah, have to course. talk about a specific medication. I'd need to do a lot of research. Prozac. I need to do it, and I don't know enough about that specific medication okay. Okay. to to speak to its effects. Okay. Well, uh, but if like hypothetically, let's say it does, taking one pill will get you high hypothetically. But it's also a painkiller. It does other stuff. It's not just like, hey, you know, it's not just to get high. I mean, it's like there are therapeutic like reasons to take it, you know. Sure, but to my limited yes. knowledge, there are other painkillers which do not result in high. So you would recommend so those would, rather you know, than if I were uh, the director, were a, doctor. A, a director of the FDA, I would probably advocate for recommending those. Interesting. Instead of products that inherently just they make usually you high. don't do like i've taken ibuprofen and my back still hurts tonight i mean okay i, I take okay. i took one ibuprofen. well there's a great chiropractor down the road That's, that you should probably check chiropract- out chiropractor like look chi- chiropractors are scam artists and they it's honestly hot takes from noah massage honestly worse than drugs because they give you a little fix and you're like oh my back's good next day you're walking you're like i i cannot move anymore give me a wheelchair my mm. back is in shooting pain mm. the chiropractor fixed it for eight hours and that's it like i woke up with back pain what's up with that really that's wow. happened yeah the you chiropractor might, you might want to replace your me, mattress let me say, if you're waking up with well, that what about kind of wrist? My pain. wrist hurts, wrist? and my chiropractor made my wrist pain even worse. Harrison, mm. I don't think we should re- rely on these uh, uh, con artists for solid medical, you know, sound advice. I think, I think they are money makers, and they do a very good job at that too. They're like, hey, come on in, I'll fix you up for two days and then you're going to be back in pain you're going to want another fix so come on back in two days like i've never been to a chiropractor and be like i've never been like wow that helped me so much and uh i didn't have a problem since i've never said that in my life so i believe in a free market and i think that are you a libertarian they're offering sorry uh, i i hold libertarian views on certain topics and i hold conservative views on other topics and I make the distinction based on what I find in the Word of God. What do you think about Sam Cedar? I'm unfamiliar okay. with Okay. You should check him out. He's pretty good. Okay. He's pretty good. Um, but I think a free market is the best way. It's, it's the best socioeconomic system because it takes the sin nature of man into account. And ultimately, Noah Massage is going to work hardest for That's Noah right. Massage. That's right. And so if you want to become a chiropractor, you're going to offer a service. And some people really like that service. And you mm-hmm. have a right to offer that service so long as it isn't a detriment to the rest of society and causing harm. Then you have a right to offer that service. People have a right to freely choose to take part in that service. Yeah. And so if Noah Massage chooses not to visit a chiropractor, I think that's fine. <laughs> if, if you choose to become a chiropractor, I think that's fine. Mm, interesting. But the free market is an important, and the more the government can stay out of that as a general principle, the better off everyone is. Okay. All right. Wow. That's some good good takes. Uh, Harrison, uh, we are getting close. We don't have to end it right now, but we're getting close to the time. So just just so you know, okay. you know, yeah. A, our time is coming close to an end. Um, Harrison, I would like to ask you this question. Do you think – appearing on my show has damaged your reputation in any way 
we'll have to see until <laughs> <laughs> wait wait and see All right. what what the people say. But I think exactly. it, I think it's good to have I think this conversations. Is great. I think yeah. this is great. Conversations yeah. are important. Being able to have a conversation with someone you disagree with exactly. in respectable normal terms. That's something we've lost in the past, you know, so many years. I would agree. And yeah. we we need to bring that back. And the free the free exchange of ideas is really important, really valuable. So thank you for having me on your show. Oh, of course, Harrison. It's an honor. And I I, I was going to ask you one more question. I totally forgot the question. What a shame. Uh, written down in me, that. I, yeah, I don't have it. Pad of notes. I don't have it written down. Glenn. Oh, that's what it was. So uh, I was on Facebook the other day, right? And really? I was. Wow. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine made a post, and he was like, he was like. Wow. Uh, he was like, Pornhub is shut down temporarily. What's up with that? He was like, don't ask how I found out. I was like, this is kind of funny. I was like, this is a pretty funny thing. Um, so I, I was like, okay, let me check from you know my own clarity. I was like, not that I visit these sites. I know. I think porn is bad. I And that's like a, that's a take that I'm coming from. I think okay. porn is, uh, you know, uh, it, it kind of like uh, desensitizes something that should be special. I agree and, with that. Point. But uh, I think you should have a right. If you want to watch porn and do what you do when you watch porn, you should be able to do that. You out there, you should be able to do that. So I went on Pornhub. I put in Pornhub.com, and it was like, hey, you need your ID to verify You know, you're 18 years or older. Who's making these decisions in Virginia that you have to be, you know, like 18? Isn't that like – isn't like – Shouldn't somebody be able to watch porn if they want to? So that's a very libertarian view, yeah. and and that's that's an issue that I'm more yeah, I fall into the conservative camp Interesting. because pornography is directly against, against the, word the Lord of God. Jesus. Yes, yeah. yeah, because you're you're lusting, and Jesus said if you're lusting after someone, you've already committed adultery. So you're really committing adultery outside of marriage uh, by viewing content of that nature. Mm. And so I don't support pornography i think it's bad and i think that you know we restrict the purchase of alcohol and the purchase of cigarettes and the purchase of firearms all things that are could be damaging mm -hmm. to society until someone is old enough to make informed decisions and so i think that something that's 100 percent as destructive as pornography should definitely be restricted yeah but don't you think banned. don't you think it bans you yes. want to ban pornography. I think we would be better off without it. And okay, well, what is pornography, Harrison? In your in your definition of the word, pornography is, is indecent exposure of the human body in a sexual context. Okay, so but eyes. what about what about a filmmaker who has a sex scene there for? Uh, you know, to add on uh, to like the story and to to make something whole and unique and interesting. And he's like, you know what? I believe the sex scene because the director, you know, they're their own judge. At the end of the day, they get to decide what to put in, what to not put in. Uh, if they want to put in a sex scene, do we start banning movies or censoring movies with sex scenes in them? Censorship is dangerous, but I yeah. think I think uh, history has you know, cut scenes before. And I think you can enjoy the movie Titanic and fast forward through inappropriate scenes. But that's such a great and scene, see though. see the entire... <laughs> it depends on <laughs> what you're viewing it for. The plot continues without having to view that explicit content. And so I, I don't support pornography. So you would any, remove... So way. if you had the choice, would you ban those scenes from total if, film? If, if Harrison Jones could personally yes. snap his fingers yes. as as a genie coming out of a bottle then yes i would i would delete all pornography and you don't think you don't think there's any movie that can use uh nudity or sexual uh uh you know imagery i don't think it's necessary you can tell a, what about, a what about, really good story what about a, and entertain crowd millions of people and not have to Go against the will of God. What about the movie Buggy Nights? I don't know if you're familiar with it, I'm but it's a movie, familiar. Paul Thomas Anderson, and it's a movie about the uh, porn industry back in, I want to say, like the 70s, you know, late 70s, early you're 80s. You're very informed on this topic. I love 
Paul Thomas Anderson. He's like one of the best filmmakers of all time. But that he made a movie, and it's a 10 out of 10. I think you should watch it. I think you would learn a lot from it, Harrison. But it's a movie, and it gets into the nitty-gritty, but it's a, a real tragic story. It's, it has a tragic ending. It's very sad. It's Pornography very s- always has a tragic exactly. ending. Exactly. But you don't think – do you think that movie – since it's already about porn and it's obviously going to show porn because that's what it's about, do you think that movie should be banned if that's the story that he's telling? I don't. I think he should tell the story without exposing explicit content. How would you even? How would you even make a movie about porn without? Well, like, if there were no porn to begin anything? with, then the movie wouldn't need to exist because there would be nothing to reference. So, control alt delete on porn. That's your. That is my that's, personal opinion. That's this guy's personal opinion, not quite mine. But guys, you know what? This has been the No Massage Show. Um, Harrison, would you like to add any closing statements before we uh, end the show? Thank you for having me on. It's been it's been an interesting uh, talk about high, you know, philosophical ideals. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. And deep down personal opinions. And ultimately, my role, you know, we started off talking about politics. My role is to represent my local constituents on the Prince Edward County Board of Supervisors. And I can do that. Um, fairly and respectfully and what i like about local government is we're dealing with real tangible issues like fixing potholes and so that's that's what i'm committed to right now in in my role but i appreciate you asking me the the big picture questions because we talked about uh the really important stuff and ultimately uh i'm i'm really thankful for the opportunity that you gave me to to share the gospel the good news of jesus christ Amen on that, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, guys, thank you for watching. This has been the No Massage Show. Uh, we will be coming back shortly with a new episode, uh, so stay tuned for that. And have a great night. Goodbye. Uh, my favorite part? <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> I'm dying. Yeah. Sounds like. Don't you feel bad? It's just a cough. Yeah. Sore throat and a cough. Mm. But. Okay. Off the cigarettes. When we're in the music, when someone dance with me, <coughs> 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 <coughs>